Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers first for this opportunity to introduce my work. I really tremendously enjoy learning and catching up with all different aspects of the diseases and the research in the field. I'm a computational biologist. By no means, I'm an expert in neurodegeneration, my, uh, my climber. And my lab studies two very challenging biological entities, somatic mutations and transposable elements. But my talk today is mostly about somatic mutations. I'm saying that these are very challenging because you know, these somatic mutations are mostly present in a very small number of cells or even in single cell. So it's really hard to distinguish them from kind of artifacts. And transposons, as previous speaker introduced, there are numerous copies in the genome. So it's very tricky to study them with current sequencing technologies. So <clears throat> my lab tried to develop and apply novel computer algorithms to leverage cutting edge sequencing technologies to study these challenging entities such as single cell DNA sequencing and long read sequencing. Um, yeah, these are fundings. And today, uh, my talk is mostly from our recently published paper in collaboration with neurogeneticist uh, Chris Walsh and his fellows Mike Miller and Mike Lorado, who now went on to have their own labs at Brigham and Women's Hospital and University of Massachusetts Medical School. And August is a computational postdoc fellow in my lab who's done most of the work I'm going to talk about today. So let me deliver this first message. So our genomes are footprints of genetic and environmental factors throughout our lives. So starting from the zygote with inherited mutations from their parents, our body accumulates somatic mutations throughout our life. So if we examine somatic mutations in our cells, we can actually understand what kind of mechanisms or process have shaped those mutations. For example, this example shows um, some spec a mutation or spectra. So for point mutations, we can have six different substitution types. And also we also consider one base pair before and after the mutation site. So we have 96 different eucleotide contexts for those so many mutations. The y-axis is the frequency of so many mutations for each category. By carefully examining or mathematically decomposing the spectra, we can understand, oh, this pattern is caused by base pair mismatch, or this pattern is caused by tobacco smoking or UV radiation. So we can understand what kind of mechanisms have shaped these mutation or changes in somatic human tissues. So more technically, depending on when these mutations occur, we might be able to or might not be able to detect them from bulk sequencing. For example, these germline mutations that are present in all the cells in our body, we can easily detect them by just typical bulk DNA sequencing. But some mutations that occur very late in the development or during aging or in pathological neurodegenerative conditions, for example, these purple mutations that are present in a very limited number of cells or in single cells. So with typical bulk DNA sequencing, we cannot detect them effectively. So we use single cell DNA sequencing to examine individual neuronal genomes to understand what's going on in these cells. In our earlier studies in collaboration with Chris, uh, we actually examined the single neuronal genomes from neurotypical human brains and identified multiple somatic transposon insertions. Here, these reads support this L L1 is one of the most active transposons in the human genome. Line 1 insertions in only these two single neurons, but the patterns were completely absent in these bulk DNA samples from the same donors. So by, we established the rate of less than one somatic line one insertions per neuron in normally developing human brains. So after this, I was fascinated by the power of single cell genomics to examine uh, neuronal genomes in more um, degenerative conditions. So we set out to answer these very challenging questions whether or how somatic mutations accumulate in Alzheimer's disease and some other neurodegenerative conditions and what are their roles 
We are still in the very beginning stage of answering these questions, but let me share what we found so far. So we performed single nucleus whole genome sequencing. Very briefly, we obtained frozen brain tissues, post-mortem frozen brain tissues, and isolated individual neuronal nuclei using UN-specific antibody, UN, and fact sorting. And we will have only picogram of DNA from each cell or each nucleus, so we amplify them to microgram quantity to do whole genome sequencing. So in this study, we try two different amplification approaches, MDA and PTA, and then we sequence about 40x uh, for each neuronal genome. So we perform many different types of bioinformatic analysis. So I'd like to emphasize the uh, importance of this step because inevitably these amplification processes create a lot of artifacts. It's very important to distinguish those artifacts from real insertions. We had to develop very specialized uh, methods for that. I unexpectedly had to write multiple rebuttals against uh, the published work uh, because you know so many mutations often can be found uh, confounded by vector contaminations or other artifacts. So we profiled single nucleus whole genome sequencing from about 319 excitatory neurons from two different brain regions, prefrontal cortex and hippocampus CA1 regions that are heavily affected by the disease from 9 AD patients and 20 control individuals. So this figure shows each dot represents one neuron. So we measure the burden of somatic single nucleotide variant point mutations here. So in control brains, we observed an age-associated increase of the burden, about 20 somatic mutations per year. In AD, we saw significantly higher mutation burden here in red compared to the control brains. This is aggregate plots only with the age-matched controls here. As I mentioned, by examining the mutational spectra, we can understand the biological process underlying the mutations. So we, do, we did some uh, mathematical decomposition and got two different signatures from the somatic mutations from AD brain. The first signature we call age, clock-like aging signature that are often found in many different cancers too. So here, both AD and control neuron showed an age-associated age increase for these signature A-like mutations. The difference was not significant. But when we examined signature C mutations, AD showed a much higher burden than control neurons. So the increased burden of mutation from AD brains mostly are coming from these signature C mutations. So when we compare the signature C spectra to recently established many cancer signatures, we identified SPS8 from the Sanger Cosmic signature is the most similar to our signature C. The pattern is very similar and the, they showed very distinct C2A enrichment. So C2A mutation can often occur when guanine base is ox oxidated. So 8-oxoguanine uh, typically base pair with A when there is no proper repair mechanism, the C switch to A. So we observe many C2A mutations in AD. So our collaborators actually confirmed a lot of oxidative damage in AD neurons compared to the control brains. And we thought, wanted to further understand the mechanisms, so we did multiple bioinformatic analysis. This is one example. We checked the correlation between the mutational burden and gene expression level. So here with total mutations, genes with the most high, uh, highest expression showed very high mutational burden. But when we decompose mutation into different signatures, interestingly, signature C showed the opposite trend. So genes with high expression showed lower mutational burden. So with other types of stranded bias analysis and other analysis, we concluded that the signature C mutations are associated with transcription coupled repair of oxidative DNA damage. So what are all these, uh, the functional consequences of these mutations? There can be multiple speculations, but this is one uh, idea we have. So with increased mutational burden, we will have a higher chance of bioallelic knockout in essential genes that can lead to cell death. 
So this figure shows the percentage of neurons with at least one knockout gene. So with control, we have this trend, but increased AD, SMB burden, we will have much higher chance of having neurons with a knockout essential genes. In our earlier studies, we also observed this increased somatic mutation burden in two different neurodegenerative conditions that were caused XP and cocaine syndrome. They were caused by inherited mutations. But uh, recently, we expanded our analysis to more late onset sporadic neurodegenerative conditions, and we see consistent patterns that somatic SMVs increase in those conditions. So to summarize, uh, we observed and think accelerated accumulation of somatic mutations in AD neurons may disrupt important gene functions, and they can be the cause of neurodegeneration. And by examining their mutational patterns, we could understand distinct mutational processes going on in AD neurons. But again, the important question whether this can be the initial cause or the just uh, consequences of uh, neurodegeneration, we don't know. We still need a lot of work to do, and we expend multiple efforts uh, to answer these questions. Our current working model to encompass all the previous knowledge is that initial tau A beta oligomers and other uh, microglia activation. We saw in our independent study uh, some evidence supporting that in AD in terms of mutations. And those things can be the cause of a lot of oxidative stress in cells and cause DNA damage. And that can lead to uh, neurodegeneration or somatic mutation increase we observe. So this is all I have for today. And thank you for your attention. Questions for Alice. So I, I think this is really interesting because people like Rick Morimoto have shown that mutations in unrelated proteins can lead to the aggregation of disease-associated proteins. Mm -hmm. And so this could be a very interesting mechanism by which sporadic neurodegenerative diseases could be initiated. Yeah, so the, all the samples we studied in this study were advanced cases. So we, because we have limited number of capacity to, to sample, so we didn't want to confound different stages of disease. So it's all from advanced stages. But we are planning to do more study with different um, stage samples. Then we can have better answer. Um, so nice talk. One of the things that as I'm listening through this morning that I'm really wondering about is I've heard, okay, so Alzheimer's is really an inflammatory or these neurodegenerative diseases are an inflammatory disease. Some of your mutational results suggest that it's an oxidative disease, that there are other people who have shown over the decades that many amyloids for our oxidants of cells themselves. And so how is it that we are going to be able to tease out what's cause and effect um, and, and then develop more effective strategies to prevent these neurodegenerative diseases? Right, that's a very important question. So one approach we will do is to do similar analysis from samples at different stages of the disease, whether it can recapitulate the disease progression. Another thing is to examine the association between non-AD pathology with the mutational burden. So our collaborator managed to sort neurons according to their phosphor tau status. So we can measure whether somatic mutation burden differs between for tau positive and negative neurons. And also we have some plans similarly with A beta oligomers. Yeah. Uh, really enjoyed your talk. So, um, you know, if you look at these somatic mutations in cancer, it's very different. You get, you know, a mutation and then that cell proliferates. So you have a lot of them with the same mutation. Here, mm -hmm. you may have a mutation and the cell dies, you'll never find it. So, and if you have somatic mutations in the neurons, you, are you now saying that every neuron is going to have the same mutation? They're going to have different mutations, neuron to neuron? Right. And if they're going to be the same, then you have to 
evoke some kind of a developmental process where it may have occurred to have the same mutation in multiple cells. If it's occurring in an adult life, then every neuron is going to have a different mutation. Yes, is that fair? I can have a very long version of answers to the question, <laughs> but let me try to answer it briefly. Yes, yeah, so these mutations I reported today are all private mutations that occurred in single cells. It's really, really hard to imagine they are recurrent across different neurons, right? So they can hit anecdotally some important gene and can lead to cell death. Uh, but I have some hypothesis that some mutations, may point mutation or transposon related DNA damage can happen in different sites, but their effect can be similar in terms of RNA because there are multiple splicing hotspots and those things. That's one of you know, very uh, explorative projects I'm doing by myself. And we have examined so many mutations, not just single neurons, but from bulk RNA seq from AD patients, or we did deep panel sequencing of cancer genes in these bulk DNA samples. We saw very interesting increase of those mutations and many of them were actually enriched in microglia. And also more interesting and puzzling is shared lineage with you know, some chip mutations. So we are very uh, working hard to understand some other aspects of some many mutations in proliferative cells in AD, not just single neurons. Uh, thanks, Alex. That was a great talk. Um, I was curious, so you, you had highlighted cocaine syndrome and zero, uh, dermapigmentosa. Both of those are genetic disorders that actually right. directly affect sensitivity to mutation, so maybe it's right. not surprising that, that yes. you found things yes. there. So I am still really interested in the question you raise about what's cause and consequence here for neurodegeneration and for AD in particular. Um, when you, so you, you have here, you know, mutational patterns distinct in AD neurons. Um, I might have missed this, but AD neurons versus other neurons in different degenerative diseases or, and also like different cell types, microglia, astrocytes, uh, have you looked at that at all? Right, so in other late onset uh, neurodegenerative conditions, we saw similar consistent uh, patterns of increased somatic mutation in ALS and CTA and some other conditions, but their mutational spectra doesn't seem to be very uh, similar to this, we need more elaboration on it. But um, for microglia, there, when we observe somatic mutation from those proliferative uh, cell types, we saw different spectra from this single neuron uh, spectra. Uh, 